<laughs> uh, apparently, the artist said that she, in the quote when she was made art to make the moose, it was in her quote that it had to be bigger than Mac the moose in Canada. <laughs> that is brilliant. That is brilliant. So the Swedish government were just like, uh, no, Norway. Norway, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Sweden. Norwegian. <laughs> <coughs> that's insane. <laughs> and it's the government that's commissioned this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Love it. So Norway and what's like Norway's politics like? What are they? I'm not very well, um, well, well versed. Um, the only thing I really know about Norway is where that's where that shooting happened a few years ago. Do you remember when that guy went onto that island? It was like a Christian holiday camp. No, no. And he came with a gun, like basically just going around the island and shooting as many people Jesus as he could Christ. before the police got him. And like that was one of those stories that stuck with me because. It, in a sense, like, I mean, do you want to, can you give me the dictionary definition of what a terrorist is? Because he had, like, really strong ideals about Christianity and things yeah. like that and was just a bit of a nutter. And the media really advertised this as just being, like, a one-off madman kind of situation. Yeah, they always do, but, Yeah, and the thing that really stuck with me was just this was around the time and there was a lot of shit kicking off about terrorism, yeah. and, like, especially in the UK, like, there was that MP that got shot and stuff like that. And it always seemed to me that if it's a white guy, then just, it's not terrorism. Oh, yeah. It's mental health. It's mental health. Yeah. They say it's a mental Which, health issue. With, with that guy as well. And again, yeah. the guy that shot that MP as well. Like, yeah. he, was, he was a radical fundamentalist. Like, yeah. He was on a very right-wing British politics. But he's got mental health issues. He's not yeah. a he's classic not a terrorist. terrorist. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, that What's is... our dictionary definition saying? Uh, okay, cool. No, I just thought I saw something. No, it is a mouse. Oh, it is a mouse. Oh. 100% I saw if it. If that was a rat, I'd be freaking the fuck out. But it's a mouse. It's a mouse. Cool. No, no, no. I thought I saw it run across and I was like, did I? Did yeah, I see you, that? You, you did stop abruptly and just start looking off in the distance. I was very okay, worried. Corey does that quite a lot. All right, cool. So <laughs> the meaning of terrorist is a person who uses unlawful violence and intimidation, especially against civilians in the pursuit of political aims. Yeah. So yeah, the dictionary definition of this guy then. Yeah, know, yeah, I mean? and like, yeah. So that's one of the main things. And then the other thing about Norway, Norway also has um, the best prisons in terms of reform. Yeah. Oh. So they have open prisons where they're like you can play basketball, you can do art classes, you're taught education, you know. Yeah. Um, and they actually have the highest rate of reform out of any prison system in the world in terms of if you count someone to go out, reoffend, and do the same crime that they came in for, which yeah. happens. A lot, a lot yeah. you know, especially considering over here we take people into prison. Like we, when they're released, we literally hand them back the same clothes they were wearing when they came in. We put them back in the same situation. We don't give them any further support. And Norway really focuses on that whole like actually turning them into a member of society and yeah. give back and not reoffend. Well, it's funny you say that because like last week or the last episode I did with a repeat beat poet I was talking about prison reform because yeah. they're, they're yeah, talking yeah, about yeah. they're thinking of doing that with the UK so like kind of taking the bars off the windows yeah. and making instead of having it at like a cell make turning it more into a room yeah they also want to <laughs> instead of calling them cellmates or prison inmates they want to call them men or yeah. women so it's kind of at first when I read the article I felt like it's kind of like you go to prison and then kind of you have a jolly yeah. yeah but then when Pete B spoke about it it's kind of like he said it in the sense that like you're saying if you, if you don't treat someone with respect when even though they have uh, done committed the, a crime, committed the yeah. crime right if you don't treat them with respect when they're inside they're just gonna go back outside and do the same thing yeah. because they haven't been educated or rehabilitated to do anything else they've yeah. just been put in a system and put in a room with loads of other criminals yeah. <laughs> and then, the other thing is as well is that you know especially with our juveniles <coughs> and stuff yeah. like you could go in for something pretty fucking minor yeah. right like you know stealing or something or, or even like money laundering like you know yeah. white collar kind of crimes yeah, yeah. but it, no matter what crime you've done you're put in the same Block, block as someone that's you know done something probably a lot worse than you did so especially for a lot of the young people yeah. that go into prison you can kind of see how it's actually easier for them to come out a worse person than yeah. they were when they went in it's the opposite of what we're exactly. trying to do really all behaviours yeah. learns and I think prison is a weird system because yeah you're right they completely sort of like they give you a number they take yeah. your clothes yeah. off you they completely yeah. like dehumanise yeah. you right? and I'm not saying that that's that's the, the worst thing to do or, or, or the wrong thing to do in inverted commas because I'm not a prison I, I'm not yeah. in a prison system but I think yeah you've got to you've got to be not compassionate almost and, and understand that 
all behaviour is learnt and somewhere along the line something has affected people enough to, to commit these crimes yeah. as a step out of place and it, the problem isn't going to be fixed by then dehumanising even more and, yeah. and, and tearing the empathy away I was in Pentonville um, I, can, so I can see Pentonville fly from, from my living room window oh really? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I love how you weren't surprised when I said I was in Pentonville you were just like oh yeah, yeah. I was actually in Pentonville this, uh, we, we did a, a Shakespearean workshop oh wow and we went into Pentonville cool. and we, we worked with uh, with some of the, the guys in there um, they had to do like obviously a good behaviour for a certain amount of time and yeah. we went in and we worked on like Shakespearean monologues <laughs> and we've got a, a lecturer a called thing, yeah it's amazing <laughs> right it's amazing like the forms you had to fill in beforehand was crazy but I mean we went in and it was it was so rewarding because I mean there was I'm not going to use any of their names clearly but that we have a, a lecturer called Patsy and uh, Patsy Rodenberg and she does a lot of like prison reform and goes in and works a lot and she says like some of the best people she's ever heard speak verse yeah. are inmates yeah. uh, and are these people who have just this absolute burning passion or rage or whatever reading Shakespeare's words and to go in and experience that firsthand, it broke my heart in some way because I mean like Again, I don't want to sound like a dickhead, but when you're in there, they just seem like normal, again, inverted commas, people. Yeah. And, you, and you don't really ever think, oh, you're in here for a, this crime. Do you know what yeah. I mean? We, didn't, we obviously weren't allowed to ask what they've done. I mean, yeah. if they offer that information, then I mean, like, what can you do? Yeah. But um, it's very strange to be in a room with people and just be, like, chilling for about, I don't know, I was about three or four hours. And then at the end of it, go like, right, we're off. And then they just, it's like porridge. You know that like, the TV show Porridge? <laughs> yeah. And you just see, like, the, the first bit where you're walking out the doors and you hear the doors clang behind you. And you're like, what? Like, that actually happened? And, like, it, it's crazy. It's crazy to think that those sort of systems still exist. I mean, yeah. I mean, Pentonville still has, like, hasn't been sort of, Reformed, yeah, or like rebuilt, yeah. Like, for was it, where, that, when, where was it actually built, Pentonville? I That's think it was thing. pre. I want to say pre nineteen hundred. I might be wrong. Um, I think you might I be think, right. I think, yeah, but I mean, there's like it's. It's terrifying, almost going in there. Do you know what I mean? Like, not, not no, the person should be like a. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so butlins, but I mean, like, I'm, although I've been to a couple of bad butlins. Yeah, but, they, could, they could be just as bad. Yeah, exactly. do you mean? those chalets, mate, they're a nightmare. <laughs> so it was opened in 1842. Oh, Jesus. And like, so again, like, this is one thing I've, I think in London compared to my, you know, country bumpkin upbringing <laughs> is there is a lot of stuff that you see where it's kind of not really fit for purpose anymore, but no. it's still yeah. going somehow. And like, and you know, it's like, you know, there's a primary school right down the road for me that's been completely rebuilt and looks fabulous, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then there's one just down the road, which is <laughs> the old Victorian the house. Yeah. yeah. And you can sort of, I, I don't know, just surprises me that we have that kind of dissonance between the brand new and the perfectly built for what it's made for to it's everyone's bit, yeah. just like make it do <laughs> there's a leak but we don't care yeah <laughs> yeah I got the best segue Donald Trump <laughs> I, sorry what was the connection there? I really was oh, just the fact of the story of like how he is the government shutting down. Oh, I see. <laughs> very, very good. Very good. I was, I was confused. But we so, right. like, obviously, if anyone doesn't know, Donald Trump currently is closing down government because he's trying to build his wall. What are we on now? Thirty-three days. Thirty-three. Yeah. Days? 30, 30, oh, 30, oh, 30, lights are off. Going. <laughs> so, we're just staying in the Royal Festival Hall as it just goes slowly dark around us. <laughs> I think they're asking us to leave. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so like it's been shut down for what, 33 days now, and it's because this wall that he wants to build. It was is... funny the way he asked for it as well because he went, I need $5 billion for the wall. And they're like, You can't have $5 billion. He's like, I need 5.5. <laughs> it went up. It was like, That's not how it works, it's... Donald. You go His down. bartering skills are shot. <laughs> But anyway, carry on. So I was going to talk about the fact of how the White House chefs have walked out because they're not getting paid, obviously. So Donald Trump had to um, <laughs> feed the... Oh, eight, I saw this picture. <laughs> I know what you're going to say. The 800,000... Uh, I, I feel like the whole government shutdown was worth it for that photo. <laughs> so he, he obviously, he served the... What, who did he have in the... Oh, was it... it um, winners of some sort of football thing. Yeah. And he had all those people there, and he fed the McDonald's. 
and oh, yeah. pizzas and, and pizza, Wendy's and, and Wendy's and he went out and, and, all, of, and all, of you, all of my your favourite foods <laughs> <laughs> he spent he all his own he money he said that there is a yeah. video of him going and all of those lovely foods that we <laughs> we like this is the uh, wonderful picture of all the food there that is silly isn't it and then he got it obviously table service <laughs> <laughs> like Imagine. all look all was nice it? the candles oh, was it Trevor Big Noah Max? or Stephen Colbert, one of them was saying that they think that this is just exactly like what Trump is, just something like so, so like unclassy, just yeah. like something really <laughs> trampy, but yeah. in a classy sense, yeah. which is essentially Donald Trump, Trump in the White House. <laughs> yeah, like, that's so so trampy, like McDonald's by candlelight dinner. Like. Yeah, you just can't <laughs> polish a turd. Do you know what I mean? Like the age old saying, like. He's just ridiculous. <laughs> How long do you think it's going to last, um, this the Donald Trump down. thing? The, well, even the government the government shutdown, do you think people will vote well, for him there's again? There's already people working without being paid. Yeah, right? that's so I many people quitting their jobs, TSA agents aren't turning up to work. Like... <sighs> I mean, he's going to shut down the country, though, isn't he? But, I mean, like, I didn't think he'd last this long. No, no, no. I, I no. honestly thought he was either going to be assassinated yeah. <laughs> or... <laughs> you, know? you, you were hoping for it. Yeah, I, like, like, I, I, think... I didn't say that. You said that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was. But, I mean, uh, we... Uh, <laughs> but, like, it's true. I mean, like, I, I'm not going to openly admit that on any podcast, but I know people that <laughs> were, like, had money on at Bookies that he was going to be, like, assassinated. And, I mean, like, the odds just keep going up. Yeah. But I mean, I honestly thought he was going to be like impeached or like actually well, run out of government waiting. with, with pitchforks. Yeah, we clearly hope. We clearly yeah, like. Wait and hope. But I feel like there's also this other shit going away. Like everyone's making it more and more confusing. Like their yeah. kind of stories keep getting thrown into the ring. And in a way, it kind of almost looks like people are doing it to instead extend the investigation time. <laughs> like you know, someone else makes up a rumor, and then the guy's like, "Well, we've got to investigate that too." Yeah, two yeah, years yeah. On the clock, you know? But then, in the other side, on the flip side, it's kind of like they're throwing so many stories into the mix to make you forget of what With the main what reason is. Of hands. Yeah. yeah, it's complete sleight of hands, smoke and mirrors. Yeah. That's all they're trying to do. But I. I, I honestly believe, okay, and this is a bit of a conspiracy theory, and this is it's, it's that it. time of night. <laughs> yeah, put, put that tinfoil hat on, guys. <laughs> Strap yourself in, because where we're going, you don't need roads. <laughs> um, that was a hell of a reference. I tried to segue into that. Um, what was I saying, Christ? Oh, yeah. Um, so I believe that things have been discovered. There are, like, the government almost sit on a bank like a wealth of stories that are, that are things like we discover new planets or stars or other things and I believe that when times get really bad they go fuck get something out of the bag and then put it on the newspaper just, just spread it all over the media because I honestly believe they have this like sort of like a pocket oh, full of yeah, stuff no, 100%. And, and they just drip note, feed it out whenever they go yeah. like oh shit something's one, gone wrong one of the first ever poems I wrote right which I probably wouldn't perform again like it really was a start of poem just getting yeah. me out there um was about this whole like it's called danger and safety and it was about some of these vaults right there's one on there which is called iron mountain which is so far under the ground that air has to be pumped inside the mountain to supply oxygen to the people who work there and it's sat behind like two 25 ton steel doors that can survive the blast of hiroshima right you could drop hiroshima on it twice and the doors would still be standing and inside that vault, um, the Smithsonian, the Smithsonian Museum, you know, the one that's got like, loads of history, artifacts and stuff, they've got vaults inside it. Um, the original film of um, Thomas Edison, uh, no, not Edison, what's his name? Einstein, you yeah. know, where he's sticking out his tongue and stuff, like yeah. that film rolls in there. Um, they've got pieces of that Flight 98, you know, the one that disappeared, yeah, they yeah. found bits of it, like the bottom of the Indian Ocean yeah. and stuff. So like, they, there are vaults, at, 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 at Room 42 Data Center, which is the data center where some of the most like private information from some of America's biggest companies, like Just Coca-Cola, is stored in the data center. So like, there are places that exist where people hide secrets. You yeah. know? There are, they are <laughs> all over the world, and sometimes those secrets have better houses, like we're saying, yeah, yeah, with yeah. some homeless people, you know? <laughs> Well, I've just got the image of uh, Indiana Jones, you know, yeah. that, that, that hanger <laughs> that opens up and they've got that box. Yeah. I honestly think Theresa May has come out of one of those boxes and they've gone, like, get her, get her out there yeah. somewhere, do you know what I mean? She is, she is no, not Therese, Theresa May is actually a gangster. So no, 100%, yeah. Because like, she's, she's always been in the media for, like, you know, her designer shoes and she likes designer clothes and stuff. Yeah. Like, she has to keep it a bit low, like, she's not wearing Gucci or whatever, yeah. you know, she's got to keep it low. She's taking the labels carpet. out. <laughs> <laughs> But like the other day she was on TV and she had this like fuck off gold chain. Like just just yeah. just flash it, just flash it a little bit, just to remind you, you know, yeah. just like <laughs> 
And again, like even the way they run the government, like you know, no, MPs and like all these backhand yeah. deals. Now like, you it. help me, I'll help you. That's gangster yeah. shit, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. Matthew the government... getting locked up over the, like halfway across the world for the same sort of shit. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. Like honestly, the government are just a bunch of gangsters. Yeah, so we, we just we.